Who are we? Well, we're pen testers, obviously. The clue's in the name. Uh, we do web apps, mobile apps. But that led us into the Internet of Things, because to have an IoT device, you need a web app and a mobile app to control it. So I love the IoT, because it's just like turning the clock back in time 10 years. We're finding bugs from a decade ago. And in one case, I'm going to show you a security flaw from 33 years ago that's in live production devices today. Now, we're going to start by looking at a, uh, a smart thermostat. Anyone got a Nest or a Hive? Sorry, a Hive? No? OK, yeah, good. Maybe you don't want to keep it that way. <laughs> um, they're actually quite secure, but we brought one along today. It's a brand name. Uh, we've taped over, so we, don't, we spare the manufacturer's blushes. And the Wi-Fi is quite secure, and the USB is quite secure as well. But if you're prepared to go a bit further with some logic probes and JTAG analyzers, you can do a whole lot more. Ian, show us what you can do. OK, so this device is actually not too bad, as Ken said. We took it from a standard user perspective. We looked at the uh, you know, TCP ports on the IP interface, the, um, the way that it sends stuff to the cloud. That was all OK. It does actually have a USB port as well, but you need to take the case off to actually view that. So what we now need to do is actually kind of go a bit lower level. Level. Um, we need to actually take the firmware off the device for us to be able to reverse engineer it to see if there's any other functions, any other vulnerabilities within the device itself. So that, that's kind of what I've got um, set up down here at the moment. You can see um, this is the JTAG header, um, and that is the USB port there. So the JTAG header is the thing that we're going to use first. JTAG is a debugging protocol. Um, we're going to use this adapter to actually connect it up to our laptop. Um, JTAG isn't normally meant to be on board for um, you know kind of production systems. It makes our lives easier because we can just um, copy the firmware off nice and easy. But what we're going to do is we've um, already connected up the JTAG header to this pin, uh, this ribbon cable. We've enumerated the pins. We've understood exactly what's going on there. And then all we need to do is plug in the USB into the laptop. Um, now, if we go back to the slide, there's a um, couple of bits of software we're using. Open OCD is a um, uh, open source bit of software that actually talks to this device, the JTAG adapter. Um, GDB is a debugger, it, uh, which will um, connect onto a TCP port that this is running on, and we can then play about with memory. Um, and once we've actually got the firmware off the device, we'll use IDA Pro to actually, um, uh, it basically, uh, it, um, I can't remember what it's called now. It re reverse engineers it. It disassembles it. That's it. It disassembles the actual binary, kind of calculates um, where all the functions are and all the data flows, so we can actually visually see exactly what's kind of going on within the thermostat. So, right, what I'm going to do now is actually go back to my Ubuntu desktop. Um, I've got OpenOCD running here and uh, GDB running here. So this is all well and good. But I've already pulled off the, um, uh, uh, by, uh, the firmware because that never works for live demos. Because this is an ARM chip, you can go onto ARM's website, pull off the data sheets, and um, they actually disclose the actual memory location of where the flash memory is going to be. I think this is 800,000 in hex. So we've already dumped uh, the firmware. It's not encrypted, and we can read it nice and easily. IDA, this is what this is. I've already loaded it up. The binary file is quite complex. Um, so what I'm going to quickly show you is these memory um, uh, addresses down the left-hand side, and then you can see that there's um, some lower-level kind of instructions going on there. Um, that's all well and good, but remember I told you about that USB cable uh, port earlier on? Now, when you plug it in when it's in its default state, it doesn't actually do anything, it just doesn't respond. So we're just going to try and work out what exactly it does and whether or not we can play around with it. So IDA's got this funky option called, um, uh, function called strings, which pu pulls out all the human readable text within the binary file. So we can go through and look, you can see all these error message and bitmaps and things like that. So that's cool. But what we're really interested in is where the USB is referenced. And if you can see there, it says number three, please insert USB cable. We double click on it. It then goes down to the firmware lo memory uh, location where that's actually referenced. And can you see, look, two, three, four, five, it's almost like a debug function. So what I'm going to do is just double click there and press space so you can see this a bit better. Oh, is quite cool. So everything's in, everything that's inside the box is, uh, box is like a function. And you can see the, um, the flow of the um, uh, variables and things like that. But what we're interested in, that's a bit above this demo, just this memory location. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect to um, this running thermostat, and we're going to tell GDB, the debugger, to just to jump to that memory location just to run that um, debug function. The debug function might be kind of certain key combinations, but we haven't worked that one out yet. We're just going to use GDB because it's slightly easier. So what we're going to do is going to go back to my Ubuntu partition, right, okay. So we've written a couple of scripts within GDB to make my life easier. So debug, 
jump to that memory location and I'm just going to run that now. I'm just going to get this in so you can see. If we go to the camera, and you can see that run in 21.9 and hopefully sometimes I need to run it twice. So cool, right, so that's worked. So it's jumped through the, gone through the JTAG interface, told the CPU to actually just run that memory uh, location. And you can see, number three, please insert USB cable. Now, in this function, once you plug in the USB cable, it starts a FAT32 file system, and you can see all the uh, bitmaps and all the files and things like that. So, you know, that's a, just a pretty much a quick overview as to what we'd do to actually retrieve the firmware. We would then look at IDA to see if we could get some more exploits and bits and pieces of like that. I'm going to just quickly show you this um, proof of concept. It's quite funny, but you know. Would this ever happen, Ken? I don't know. Um, ransomware in a IP-enabled thermostat? What do you reckon? <laughs> I think we're talking about potentially uh, a few years in the future, don't you think? Um, we proved it's possible. I think the reality of malware and ransomware on the IoT devices is probably three or four years away. But we proved it's possible. But we shouldn't have been able to. The JTAG port shouldn't have been enabled in a production device. And you shouldn't have been able to extract the firmware. It should have been digitally signed so we couldn't modify it. And the debug function, that was just hidden. That's not how you do security. You don't hide stuff because we will find it. Now, if you find yourself getting malware on your thermostat in the future, frankly, there ain't no antivirus out there that's going to fix this one. You need to throw it away and start again.